Hi, uh, welcome to this video where I'll be showing Azure Kubernetes service. I'll be showing a web application and database pattern that leverages uh, MySQL uh, as a container and using uh, Azure Managed Disk. Uh, this is a Azure Kubernetes uh, service in uh, the Azure platform and I want to demonstrate one of uh, many options in leveraging and using databases for your applications. Here I have my Kubernetes uh, cluster uh, shown in the uh, Kubernetes dashboard. I will deploy a WordPress application from this tutorial from Kubernetes IO docs. It deploys a WordPress and MySQL with a persistent volume. And this is just a generic cloud agnostic uh, deployment and I'm going to use it to deploy into Azure Kubernetes service. And so just following these instructions and I've kind of modified a few things uh, uh, to work towards my uh, preferences and to work with uh, Azure Kubernetes service. So after downloading the kind of the YAML files, I'll just focus on the, the MySQL kind of portion, uh, containerized application. So this file right here, MySQL Deployment YAML, uh, already defines a kind of service object, persistent volume claim, and the deployment. So let's start off with the deployment. So deployment is the load, right, that specifies the container, okay? And we'll pull the MySQL kind of Docker image, uh, define secrets. So this is the database password here. I'm just using uh, password for demo purposes. Uh, container ports, but let's focus on the volume. Okay, how the volume um, is configured and set up in a kind of persistent way. One thing to note is that in Kubernetes with containers applications, pods and uh, containers. Um, are ephemeral. Uh, they, it being resilient, have uh, many replicas and being low balanced across. But with databases, um, it's not so uh, straightforward, right? Because um, containers are kind of stateless from the start. Okay, so you know how do we make um, our data more stateful and persistent? You know, even when these uh, uh, pods they've uh, died out and, and, and even though they get quickly recreated. So here let's focus on the volume mounts okay and it needs a volume and this volume MySQL persistent storage is referring it to a persistent volume claim okay. A persistent volume claim is really an assertion or a request for a, a storage resource it is uh, dynamically provisioned and it is kind of requested by the user, right? Or in other words, I like to say by this application as opposed to uh, a cluster administrator, right? Which is would be done uh, automatically. This aspect fulfills one of the principles of cloud native uh, applications, okay? So let's look at the uh, uh, persistent volume claim Okay, and um, the one thing to note here is really the access mode, okay, the, the storage class, okay, and the storage class is um, uh, built into AKS, okay, as being the actual storage resource, which type of storage resource, right? Here it's called managed premium, okay, and the managed premium uh, refers to an Azure managed disk, you know, a, so, uh, a solid state uh, drive, high performance, low latency, and so that's what's being specified here. And we can, uh, in this case, uh, specify the resource, right, like in terms of the storage volume or capacity. So here we have two uh, gigabits, okay? Once you have that set up, this should dynamically provision kind of your, your resource, okay? In terms of the storage class, okay, so this was um, looking at the uh, storage class uh, object um, kind of manifest. We can tell that this is 
referring to something in Azure, the provisioner is, you know, an Azure disk and the kind is is managed, okay? The storage account type is uh, premium locally redundant storage. And we'll see that being created in the, the Azure resource group, okay? So I'll just go ahead and I will uh, run this, okay? Here is my installation script, okay? And let's go ahead and uh, deploy and run those um, YAML uh, manifests. So here I have my, uh, let's create the namespace. Okay, namespace was created. Uh, let's set the current context. Um, so I'm kind of in the namespace. So kubectl. The pods, I shouldn't find anything. Uh, let's go to the Kubernetes dashboard. Um, okay, there we go. Overview. Okay, okay awesome. So let's um, run this kubectl apply dash k and it runs a um, YAML file that refers to deploying my MySQL the WordPress front end containerized app send secrets. Okay, I'm going to the Kubernetes dashboard. It is being deployed. I'll give it some time. Pulling those Docker images. Okay, so. Now everything's uh, lighting up green and it should be okay. Uh, note that I do have, I have set up an ingress um, such that it's uh, public facing and it is pointing to, so I set up a DNS, wordpress.arkim.ca. So wordpress.arkim.ca, let's see what happens here. It's being hit, load up. Okay, great. So that, so let me just go through the kind of configuration steps. Okay. Uh, let's call this Roy WordPress. Uh, let's just use this password and click install WordPress. Okay, and here we go, we're in. So let's just, you know, quickly um, s let's see here, sample page. Okay, so we'll just call it AKS WordPress uh, Persistent Storage Demo. We hit update. There we go. Um, and let's flip over to um, the end user side. And here we go. So we have the uh, WordPress database um, set up with uh, WordPress application. Uh, Hello world. And there we go. So now kind of let's look at um, what happened behind the scenes during this process. Okay, so here is the kind of the architecture, okay, that I had set up for this demo. Um, we have the kind of the WordPress uh, uh, de deployment of the con uh, kind of the front end and then the uh, database back end okay and this is really a kind of a single pod um, kind of non ha uh, architecture design they both have managed disks you know the wordpress um, has a managed disk defined for that it can save files where mysql you know needs to store its kind of relational uh, database okay um, and so to expose this application to the internet um, I set up an ingress, an ingress rule, 
um, have a TLS cert and a uh, DNS, which is wordpress.archim.ca. Um, and here are kind of a detailed view uh, from a kind of Kubernetes object in resources uh, point of view. So um, at first we have kind of within that pod, which I showed kind of the de deployment kind of YAML. Um, there was a kind of volume and volume mount uh, specification and that was pointing to the persistent volume claim. Okay, um, as I've shown before right here, okay. Um, the next thing is that in that persistent volume claim, we start to define what um, uh, persistent uh, storage attributes or properties we want. Uh, we want to have read write once because managed disk only supports read write once, which means that um, the managed disk only is associated to a, a, to a particular node in the VM uh, scale set. Okay. Uh, of which that node contains the the pod of your your database. Uh, the next is that storage class, okay? Um, that is kind of a built-in um, abstraction of the you know actual um, managed disk uh, resource in in Azure, okay? And we want to specify two gigabits, okay? Uh, next is the the storage class, right? And just looking at kind of like um, looking at the description of this object, we see some information that it is um, related to kind of an Azure managed disk. Okay. Um, so once the once this, everything is deployed and the persistent volume claim um, then uh, makes kind of a request to check it if there is a uh, previously deploy like matching persistent volume. If it doesn't, then it starts to dynamically create this uh, Kubernetes object right here, right? And by looking at that uh, persistent volume description that was deployed, you know we can see kind of the claim name, the re resource that we see here, Azure Managed Disk. Okay, and you know by going to the Azure portal. We can see that manage disk, and if you click into it, uh, you can see more details, kind of, you know, uh, which you know namespace that disk is part of, and um, and you know which um, you know pod or or deployment workload that's related to, which is MySQL. So let's go back to the Kubernetes dashboard, and you know, see what that looks like. So again. We have this deployment right here. Okay, um, creates the uh, the pod deployment. Go to replica set. We have the pod. It refers to the uh, volumes. Let's look at the volumes here. The volumes. Mount, uh, mount path, volume mount, and the volume itself, uh, referring to the MySQL um, uh, persistent volume claim. Uh, we can see the persistent volume claim right here uh, for the MySQL and uh, the WordPress uh, front end, and the persistent volumes that's been created. So. We have uh, um, this one right here for the WordPress front end and uh, MySQL. Where's the MySQL? Uh, you can see that it is two gigabits as it was defined. Um, if we go to take a look at the Azure portal and um, we can see these uh, managed disks that have been created. Let's see. Um, and by looking at the tags, it was created with for the uh, MySQL um, uh, persistent volume claim here. So the it's the premium SSD, uh, two gigabits. And the owner VM um, is this one right here. 
and the disk date is attached. So that's what that managed disk will look like uh, with respect to the virtual uh, machines. So to demonstrate the storage being actually persistent, we can see what happens if the, the pod dies. Okay, so what we can do is we go with deployments. And what we can do is we can kind of scale down. Put it to zero. Um, give it some time. Okay, and we can try to refresh the WordPress. Okay. So because the MySQL pod is terminated, uh, obviously that we won't have anything okay now what if we bring that back up so let's scale it back to one to get that pod back now what's happening is you know, it's going to kind of reattach the existing storage. It's still um, using this persistent volume claim. And let's refresh. Okay. And we can go to our uh, pages, okay, and you can see here that in the beginning I did some editing. So it wasn't like a brand new vanilla install or, you know, this was information or data that I've um, saved uh, before I, you know, uh, scaled down. So this information has actually been persisted. So I've demonstrated uh, data being persistent using Azure Managed Disk with a in-cluster database with uh, MySQL.